Corona 14 now supports Gaussian splats. It's a rendering technique that makes it super fast to create detailed, natural looking environments. We get real time speed with photorealistic quality. Just drop a scanned environment into your scene, move the camera around, no lag at all. And when we hit render, the results are seriously impressive. So let's jump into PostShot and make our own splat scene. For this demo, we are using a sequence of images from Prague Old Town. First, let's choose Use Best Images and set the max image count to about 150. Then I will bump up both the max splat count and the stop number. That way we capture all the fine details we need for a dense, high quality Gaussian splat output. Now that our scene is ready, let's export just the splat. To bring it into Cinema 4D, head up to the Corona menu and choose Corona Gaussian Splat. Once the object is in the scene, we will load the file we exported from PostShot. Since axis orientation can vary depending on the source, Corona gives us options to flip and correct it quickly, or we can just rotate it manually if that's easier. Next up, we will scale the splats so they fit properly in the scene. To make them easier to see in the viewport, we'll also raise the point cloud number to 50. Now let's fire up Corona's interactive rendering to preview the setup. You will notice the splats look a little bit dark. That's because the ACES OT or the output transform is clamping values above 1, which hides their full dynamic range. Once we turn that off, the splats are no longer clamped. And since we won't need the ACES OT anymore, we can safely remove that element from the setup. With the environment set up, let's bring in our 3D object and integrate it with the Gaussian splat. The new building sits right in this area, so the goal is to keep a nice balance with the surrounding greenery while adding a modern touch to the corner of this historical town. Next, let's grab our pre-made object and set it up as a slicer. First, we will create a slicer material. In the list below, set the mode to include and add the Gaussian splats we loaded earlier. That way the slicer only affects the splats. Let's assign the material to our object and check out the result in the interactive rendering. Now that the part of the Gaussian splat has been sliced, giving us a flat surface, we can switch on the building groups. You'll notice that the building is slightly visible even without any lights. That's because these splats come with baked in lighting. To properly light our 3D model, let's switch on a Corona Sun and a Sky System. At this point, the scene looks a little bit too bright. And if we try lowering the exposure in the VFB, the Gaussian splats end up way too dark. Luckily, the fix is simple. Just uncheck the relevant options in the splats shading properties. This step makes sure that the splats aren't affected by the VFB stone mapping, so they keep the correct brightness while we adjust the overall exposure. Now our environment and objects line up nicely. Corona gives us separate tone mapping controls for splats, so we can fine tune their look. We can go for a custom styles using LOTs or lookup tables, or tweak things with color corrections, like tint, contrast, brightness, or even green and magenta shifts. For now though, we will hold off on those adjustments. Next up, let's bring back some greenery. We'll add vegetation from Chaos Cosmos, starting with a film elm tree and place it strategically around the building. This helps our 3D objects blend seamlessly with the Gaussian splats. Now let's switch on the group with the extra trees and bushes we prepared earlier. These add more detail and life, making the new building feel like a real, livable part of the environment. The greenery really brings the scene to life, and we've got one last step to push it even further. To finish the setup, let's place a plane right under the building to act as our ground. Then we'll make a copy of that plane and move it behind the building, extending it up vertically to act as a background wall. This gives us a surface to catch the shadows. Once both planes are in place, we will assign a shadow catcher material to them. Now let's switch to a more interesting camera angle and open up Corona's interactive render to see the results live. 
you can clearly see how the shadow catchers make a big difference, helping the building blend naturally into the environment. Finally, let's set up some animation. We'll add a keyframe for the starting camera position, and then just adjust the camera to find a stronger view for the end frame of the sequence. With Gaussian splats, we can bring realistic reflections and shadows straight in our scene, all while speeding up our workflow. It's a powerful way to blend detail and efficiency, and it opens the door to creating environments that feel truly alive.